Hey everybody, Headspace here. Welcome to another video guide for DCSA 10. And this time we're going to examine the Lightning 2 targeting pod because the targeting pod is arguably the best weapon in the game. Uh, that isn't actually a weapon. Now, this is Beta 2. I've tried to make these guides as future proof as possible based on how the systems are supposed to work, but there's never any guarantee, so take everything you see here with a grain of salt as usual. Now everybody knows that the targeting pod is this awesome little device with frickin' laser beams in it that hangs off the side of your plane and designates targets for you. But its real power lies in the high resolution CCD and FLIR cameras that it has. The pod is excellent for assisting players in setting up a maverick shot and it's of course absolutely essential if you want to quickly designate targets to deliver JDAM strikes. But like most things in the DCS universe, there's a lot that goes into learning how to use it. And uh, let's give you an example. How many times have we heard somebody say, why are my JDAMs hitting meters and meters away from where I designate? And for all its usefulness, there's still a great deal of confusion surrounding how the pod operates. To understand why the pod appears at times to designate the wrong terrain, we have to get into what's going on under the hood. So in order to designate the target, two things need to happen. First, the pod must be pointed at the target. That's the easy part. Second thing is the pod has to have a reliable method of calculating slant range or the range between your jet and the target. When you view a target through the pod's camera, the pod will attempt to provide the range in one of two ways. First, if you're not actively lasing the target at a suitable range for the laser rangefinder to operate, it will compute slant range based on known terrain elevation. In other words, it's going to target the ground it finds along the pod's line of sight and ignore any objects in its path since they're not included in its terrain database. We might mistakenly assume that the point being stored when you designate a mark point or sensor point from the pod is what's seen in the camera, but that's not always the case as we can see here. In order to get a more accurate range to the target, we have the option of hitting it with the laser rangefinder from the pod. This might not always be an option, but it delivers far more accurate slant range at low angles to the target. Of course, the most effective way to designate a target with the pod's line of sight is at a high angle. This will allow for far more wiggle room because you'll be designating from a top-down position and thus you'll mark the ground underneath the target. Okay, so let's run through a scenario where we engage targets with the pod using the different types of ranging techniques. Right now I've got a handful of targets about 20 miles to my south. The first thing I'm going to do is arm weapons, arm the laser, and turn the pod on so it can boot up. The pod is going to initially show a not timed out message and then run through its built-in test before becoming available to use. I'm going to speed through the different stages of activation here and after a couple minutes you're going to see the blank standby screen. Okay, now that the pod is booted up, I'm going to go ahead and switch it over to the left MFD. You'll see why in a second. Switches the CDE repeater on the right. And I'm going to click on air to ground mode. And you can see here we have an image. I'm going to go ahead and switch it to sensor of interest. And the first thing you're going to want to realize here with the HUD is that the little diamond up here is pointing exactly where your pod is pointed at. So you can use that as a reference point just in case you uh, lose the reference point from the MFD picture. Second thing to note is the mode of tracking is going to be either area, if it's focused on an image similar to the force correlate mode on the Maverick, and it's going to be INR or inertial if it's tracking based on geographic location. Once you've slewed it, it's going to be in area mode. The other mode is point mode, and that is analogous to the normal centroid tracking on the Maverick, where it focuses on the contrast between an object and the object's background. Using the boat switch, we can switch to one of the FLIR views. Be hot, uh, meaning that black objects are hotter white hot, uh, meaning it's the reverse, white objects are hotter. And you can see here that uh, 
you see those little targets in the distance. The FLIR modes are very handy for picking up objects at a distance. I'm going to go ahead and switch to uh, narrow field of view. It's going to be China Hat Forge short. And then I'm going to zoom in to one of these objects with the DMS forward. And finally I'm going to do boat switch middle. Switch to CCD and I've got myself a truck here. Pushing forward just a little bit more. I'm going to do TMS forward short to switch to point mode. I am now locked onto that point and it's going to want to stay locked on. You see I'm trying to slew it here. Now let's talk about how it derives the range. Right now the laser is off and the pod is in strict line of sight mode. And you can tell by the T right here. L means that the laser is selected, not the infrared laser, just the regular ranging laser, designating laser. And if I toggle the laser mode up here, you can see that the infrared laser, or the infrared pointer, is now selected. Hitting it again, both are selected. You're going to see a B there. And I've switched back to my normal laser. I'm going to go into my control page and turn latching to on. And what latch on does is it allows me to keep the laser on just by hitting the laser button. Otherwise, if latching was off, I would be lasing just as long as the button was depressed. I'm about five miles out, so going to ease back in the throttle just a bit. Let's do some designating. Right now, laser is off. I'm going to designate a mark point on this truck using line of sight. It's going to be mark point A, TMS right short. I'm going to turn the laser on, and that flashing L indicates the laser is on. Designate another mark point, TMS right short. So we've got mark, mark point A, which is going to be the line of sight designated mark point, and then mark point B is the laser designated mark point. I'm going to turn the laser off now. Now I'm going to roll out here before I do anything else and designate another target. Okay, so I'm going to turn labels off here real quick because I don't really need them. And I'm back on my truck nine miles out. I'm going to take it back into area mode. Zoom back out. CMS back. Now let's pick another target out. Uh, I know I have a bunker out here somewhere. I want to demonstrate it on a building. There we go. Zoom back in. And I'm going to area mark, again, using line of sight mode. I'm going to try to get right on top of this bunker's roof. It's going to be mark point C. Again, TMS right short. Turn my laser on and do mark point D. Turn laser off. So I have now got four mark points. Two on the truck, that's A and B with line of sight and laser designation respectively. And then C and D are the same on this bunker here. So what I'm going to do next is roll out at a right angle and we'll see exactly how far off these marks were made by the pod based on what it knew and what mode it was in. Okay, heading east, I've turned all the way around, and you'll notice that I've boresighted the pod with uh, China Hat rear short, and zoomed all the way out. I'm going to go ahead and switch my CDU into mark point mode, and that's going to allow me to use my mark points, A, B, C, and D, as waypoints. All right, let's select mark point A, and I'm going to hit China Hat forward long, slew to mark point A with the pod, decrease field of view, and you can see here what we saw in the diagram for line of sight mode has come true quite literally. It is pointing behind the truck because it did not really see the truck there. It just saw the terrain because the computer has no knowledge of the truck. 
and thus designated behind it. Uh, let's switch to mark point B and in this case it designated right in front of where the laser mark was. Now I don't know about you but I'd rather my 500 pounder hit right there in front of the truck than X amount of meters behind it. It's not perfect but it's closer than you would normally get. Switching to mark point C and zooming out the same holds true for the bunker and switching to D we can see that the laser impacted right on the bunker's roof like we wanted it to and that is a viable target to hit. Yeah, let's go ahead and drop ourselves a JDAM on this thing. Now what I generally like to do using line of sight is to aim at the base of the vehicle right between the wheels or on the wheel and that'll get the marker uh, close to the base of the vehicle instead of behind it and area mode is helpful when you're doing this point mode is going to get you right on the vehicle area mode gives you a little bit more granularity so now that the JDAM is headed toward its target I hope that this was helpful for you and that it taught you a little bit more about how the lasers work in terms of ranging and I'll see you next time take care